Hey guys, welcome back to another Read Aloud with Miss Dunn. I'm so glad that you're here to read a story with me. Um, today we're going to read a book called The Princess and the Pizza. Um, go ahead and take a look at the cover. Think about what you think the princess might do in the story. Um, make a prediction or a guess. Make a guess about what's going to happen in the story. The Princess and the Pizza was written by Mary Jane Ann Herm Ock. They wrote the words and they drew the pictures. Princess Paulina needed a job. Her father had given up his throne to become a woodcarver and move them to a humble shack in a neighboring kingdom. Since the king was still learning, his carvings didn't sell, and Paulina's garden barely kept enough on the table. Paulina missed princessing. She missed walking the peacock in the royal garden, surveying the kingdom from the castle tower, and doing the princess wave in royal processions. Paulina tried walking a stray chicken around her shack, but it only pecked at her bare toes. Surveying the kingdom from the shack's leaky roof made even more holes. She tried princess waving to the townspeople from her father's cart, but nobody bothered to wave back. They thought she was just swatting at flies. One day, a page rode past the shack, announcing that Queen Zelda of Balaam was seeking a true princess to become the bride of her son, Prince Rupert. Prince Drupert. This is my chance to get back to princessing, Paulina cried. She rummaged through her trunk of ex-princess stuff. She brushed the wood shavings from her best ball gown and blew away the bits of sawdust that clung to her diamond tiara. Then she tucked a piece of garlic into her bodice for good luck. She snipped some fragrant herbs to cover up the garlic smell, and she headed for the castle. Paulina didn't expect much competition. There wasn't another princess for hundreds of miles. But when she got to Blom Castle, Paulina found she was only one of twelve princesses hoping to become the royal bride. When she looked into her assigned room, Paulina saw her bed piled with sixteen mattresses. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake, the old princess and the pea trick. That's so once upon a time. Naturally, Paulina didn't sleep at all. All night, because she felt the lumpy pea through all the mattresses. When the twelve princesses gathered in the throne room the next morning, the seven who looked bright-eyed were sent home. Bright-eyed means that they didn't look tired. They looked like they'd gotten a good night's sleep. Now only Paulina and four other sleepy princesses remained. First, they were made to write essays entitled, Why I Want to Have the Gracious and Exquisitely Beautiful Queen Zelda for My Mother-in-Law. Prince Drupert and Queen Zelda finally made an appearance on the balcony. Queen Zelda did all the talking. Congratulations, ladies. You've written some lovely essays, which I will keep in my scrapbook. And you have all passed the mattress test. But to make absolutely sure you are the royal blood, there is a second test. Only a true princess can wear these glass slippers. For Pete's sake, you never heard of sneakers, Paulina asked. Queen Zelda gave Paulina a sharp look. Nobody said you had to take a hike in them. Just try them on. After the royal page made his way around the room with the slippers, two big-footed princesses were sent home. Now only Paulina and two others remained. One was followed around by seven strange little men, and the other had such a long braid dragging behind her. Paulina kept tripping over it. For Pete's sake, you never heard of scissors, Paulina cried. Queen Zelda glared at Paulina. You have all passed the second princess test. Your final task 
is to cook a feast that proves worthy of being my dear Rupert's wife. This set up a wail among the princesses, especially Paulina. For Pete's sake, you have no royal chef. Silence, said the queen. The table holds the makings for three fine feasts. Choose well, for the winner will become my dear Drupert's bride. As Paulina started for the table, the long-haired princess tripped her, then loaded up with food. By the time Paulina got there, the seven strange little men, who'd run off with everything but some flour, yeast, water, three overripe tomatoes, and a hunk of stale cheese. Hey, that's not fair. Queen Zelda, will you help me? No, said the queen, because you have a big mouth. Mm. The queen doesn't seem happy with Paulina. What do you think Paulina will make? A servant escorted Paulina to her room and locked the door. Hey, uh, how can I cook without a bowl or spoons or pots? There was no reply. Paulina tried to make bread, kneading the flour, water, and yeast together, but it only stuck to the tray in a flattened mess. She squished the tomatoes over the dough to brighten it up. It looked awful. She sprinkled cheese gratings over the top. It was still a mess, and Paulina was exhausted. For Pete's sake, where's your fairy godmother when you need her? I'm going to take a nap. She reached under the pile of mattresses, pulled out the offending pea, and climbed into the bed. She hadn't been sleeping long when there was a knock on the door. Only twenty minutes left, called the queen. I don't smell anything cooking. I'm not cooking, said Paulina. I'm napping, and then I'm going home. You're not going anywhere, said the queen. The losers will be beheaded. Paulina sat bolt upright. Beheaded? You didn't tell us that. I forgot, said the queen. Can't I, I have a second chance? How about I try to spin straw into gold? Or maybe I could guess a weird little man's name? No second chances, declared the queen. But that's not fair, Paulina cried. Who needs to be fair? I'm the queen. Paulina leaped out of bed and ran to the window. But it was an unbelievably long drop to the ground. The meal was her only hope. She rushed the tray over to the fireplace, stirred the few remaining hot coals, then crushed her garlic and sprinkled it over the mess for good luck. Finally, Paulina tossed on the herbs to cover up the garlic smell. Mmm, how do you think what she made will taste? Paulina paced back and forth, planning her escape. Perhaps she could make a deal with the long-haired princess to climb down her braid. She didn't notice that the gooey, goopy dough had browned into a crust. The tomatoes were bubbling, the hard bits of cheese had melted, and the fragrance of garlic and herbs filled the room. A page opened the door. Time's up. Paulina took a deep breath and carried her tray into the great dining room. The other princesses had made lovely feasts, especially the one who had the seven strange little men to help her. Prince Drupert went right to Paulina's tray. It's not pretty, but it smells scrumptious. He helped himself to an unusually generous piece. What do you call this dish? Paulina shrugged. I don't know. It can't be an official entry in the contest if it doesn't have a name said the queen. Oh, for Pete's sake, Paulina muttered. What's that? snapped the queen. Pete's what? Remembering the beheaded threat, Paulina frantically tried to think of a name. It's Pete's... Uh... Pizza? The queen took a big bite. 
odd name, but it's tasty. The winner is Paulina's Pizza. You mean I won't be beheaded? I was only kidding about the beheading, said the queen. Then I was only kidding about wanting to marry Prince Rupert. Who needs him? I have other plans. Will you leave your recipe? asked the queen. No way, said Paulina. It's just become a family secret. She headed for the door. I liked you best, whined the queen, following close behind. Ah, for Pete's sake, muttered Paulina as she stumped across the drawbridge. Princess Paulina's Pizza Palace opened a few weeks later. It featured unusual carved furniture and 50 kinds of pizza. Every Thursday on the Royal Chef's Night Off, Queen Zelda and Prince Drupert came to Paulina's for popcorn pineapple pizza. They often stayed to play cards with Paulina's father. From then on, whenever Paulina drove her pizza delivery cart through town, along with doing the princess wave, everybody waved back and ran after her, asking about the day's specials. Life was good. Paulina was grateful not to have Queen Zelda for a mother-in-law, but she still worried about one little thing. She worried about getting Queen Zelda as a stepmother. That was a silly story. Thanks for listening while I read the princess and the pizza. Do you think you could create something yummy to eat? A whole new thing that's just your idea? Today, draw a picture of what you would cook if you had all the ingredients in the world. Ingredients are the things we call something that we put into something. So like pizza, the ingredients are dough and sauce and cheese. Draw a picture and make something totally new. Thanks for reading with me and have a great day.